welcome to presentation uh, on how we tackle the M3 Challenge 2022 Part of Future. Let's begin with an overview of our work. The challenge has asked us to model remote work trends. Could you use that mic, please? Part I. Can you hear me? For part one, for five example cities, we estimate the percentage of jobs which are remote ready. Our model divides the labor market into 10 sectors and uses an exponential regression to track each sector's share of each city's workforce over time. Our model divides the workforce into, uh, combining this with the percentage of jobs in each sector that can be done from home gives an estimate for each city. In part two, we use a conditional probability model to obtain the percentage chance of a given worker whose job is remote ready actually working from home. Finally, in the third part, we combine models one and two via a population simulation model, simulating the population for each given city and obtaining a percentage of actual remote workers for each city, then using this to rank the cities. We begin by assuming that remote work is a general term which, can be, uh, which includes both partial and full remote work. Generally, full versus hybrid remote work is an additional detail which is sorted out by the employee once they decide to work from home, and incorporating the distinction between the two would add additional complexity to our model without offering many benefits in terms of modeling. For the first part, we created a model to estimate the percentage of remote ready jobs in a given city and applied it to Seattle, Omaha, Scranton, Liverpool, and Barrie. To simplify the problem, we made three main assumptions. First, as we're dealing with only short time periods in which significant advancements in robotics or communication technology are unlikely, we assume that the proportion of remote ready jobs in a given industry will remain constant between now and 2027. Secondly, although many job losses recurred during the pandemic, we assume that long-term trends in each industry's share of the workforce are likely to remain uh, similar. So we assume that the growth in our economic sectors, irrespective of remote work, will follow pre-pandemic trends from the lower base of post-pandemic levels. Finally, as we're dealing with remote-ready jobs here, we can safely exclude factors associated with the individual who has that job with these coming into consideration in Model 2. We start by defining our variables. As the input data begins in the year 2000, we base our time from then. We want to project industry patterns in a city, so we define NIC as the number of jobs, all jobs in a given sector or in a given city at time t. PIC is this value as a proportion of the total workforce size in city C. Our goal is to identify RC of t, the percentage of jobs in city C at time t being remote ready. To do this, we also need HI, a constant for the percentage of jobs in industry I being remote ready. With these variables, we wanted to set up this model in which the remote work percentage for a given city at time t is the sum over all industries of the proportion of jobs in that city being in that industry multiplied by the number of the proportion of jobs of those jobs in that industry being remote ready. This is similar to an expected value. The pie charts visualize how the model would work, collecting up the remote work portions of each industry in the city in order to generate an overall remote work percentage. First, we worked out PIC. We use an exponential model as it fits the data well, and also makes sense in context, because its asymptotic behavior prevents the prevent percentage from falling below a certain level. This is closer to real life, as industries will not rise or shrink indefinitely. For each city industry pair, we use a spreadsheet package to get PIC of T. We now have PIC, but we need HI to complete the model. HI, the proportion of each industry being remote ready, brings in the remote work part of the model. Most of these values were given in the provided data. However, some industries did not match of, over those in PIC. A weighted average reflects the proportions of each subsector in each sector where required. This gives us enough information to get some results. On the left, you can see a sample exponential regression and the resulting industry share percentages. Applying the model to each of the five cities in the two given years, 
in, yeah, in two given years gives this table of results with values ranging from 31 to 42% and Seattle topping the charts. Our model's results are consistent with other studies, reflect industry trends over time, and show logical behavior over a range of short-term periods. However, the model is less well adapted to longer time periods, where our assumptions and data make prediction more difficult. Use of extrapolation is always fraught with error, especially over longer time periods, as it's impossible to know how far it deviates from reality. In part two of the problem, we were asked to create a model to determine whether a given worker in a remote work ready job will actually work from home. We define this question to ask for the percentage chance that said worker will, remote, will work remotely, because this can be more easily reused in part three. To make modeling easier, we assume that the desire to work from home is independent of whether or not you actually can. This is because, uh, this makes sense, because you might want to work from home, but not be allowed to, or vice versa. And so on a sort of logical level, it would seem to be making sense. We also suppose that 2019 ONS data representatively quantifies different groups' chances of working from home pre-pandemic, as this is the most recent data prior to 2020. Thirdly, we suppose that the pandemic has increased people's desire to work from home by a constant factor, which is the value of which is suggested by a previous study on the topic. Finally, we preserve the remote work rate uh, assumption within industries from model one, and we also make a simple as assumption about the distribution of workers' ages. We began modeling by identifying factors affecting the required probability. These include demographic factors and some jobs aspects such as the industry and commute time. We thought that whether you have children, your income and the size of your business might also affect the probability, but relevant data was not available and we weren't sure how this would actually affect the model. As our model uses probabilities, it is important to clearly define the pertinent events. We define four. W, the event that the worker wants to work from home. R, the event that the worker's job is remote ready. A, the event that the worker's employer allows them to work from home. And WP, the event that the worker would want to work from home pre-pandemic. The events W and WP are linked by this relation with the pandemic correction constant reflecting the increase in desire to work from home post-pandemic in accordance with our assumption. And we set C equals 1.4 based on the data in the footnote. Using these events, we express the probability that someone in a remote ready job is allowed to and wants to work from home as the probability of W and A given R. Conditional probability gives us this expression and we use the independence assumption to give this. We now apply the definition of C as in the relation on the previous slide to get this and we use the independence assumption again to recombine probabilities in the numerator and also note that C was set as 1.4. Now we could ask why is this formulation useful? Well, it's useful because P of WP and A and R is just the overall probability that that particular worker worked from home pre-pandemic. Simply because workers work from home if and only if they want to, are allowed to, and are in a remote ready job. This means we can estimate this using the 2019 ONS data. This data is provided in tables for a range of different characteristics, which give year-on-year -year work from home percentages for a given class of workers. Similar tables exist for other industries and for sex, ethnicity, and other factors. But as a given worker has several of these characteristics, how can we reliably combine these tables to estimate the true chance of working from home pre-pandemic for that worker? We use a technical computing algorithm to do so. The equation is an equivalent representation of the code used to evaluate it. We used OOP to write the code because it scales effectively for question three, in which we need to use it many times. We start by defining the base rate B to be the overall chance that a random worker in the whole population would work from home in 2019 without ac accounting for any of that worker's features. 
the estimated probability for that particular worker is that value multiplied by, for each of the uh, characteristics of that worker, that particular characteristics, it, a specific chance of working from home, normalized over the base rate. We then also multiply by two other terms to account for the commute distance of the worker and also the age of the worker in accordance with the features that we specified. We use tanch of the commute distance because it goes through the origin. And this is because if you, work, if you live at work, you can't work from home, although perhaps there's a paradox there. And also because the probability decreases, um, as, uh, it's because the probability uh, of working from home increases as you get further away from your office and the rate of increase decreases over time, which makes sense because the impact of a small increase uh, in your commute distance lessens. This term accounts for the age of the worker, and it was simply designed empirically in order to make the work from home probability decrease with age. So this is a reminder of our model. We have C and probability of WP and A and R. So we just need probability of R. This is given in the M3 challenge data set on a per industry basis. So this gives all that we need to get some results. On this slide, we present the remote work probabilities for a few possible people, noting how the different factors affect the chance via incremental changes. For example, our model predicts women are more likely to work at home than men, and also those two with a greater education or a shorter commute time. Obviously, we can't show all possible combinations here, but this illustrates the general model. We will evaluate these results when we reuse it in model three. In this subproblem, we combine models one and two to estimate the proportion of workers who would actually work from home in each of the given cities, and then rank the, the impact of remote work on each city. This model relies on one major additional assumption. Subpopulations identified by a given sex, ethnicity, etc., have the same distribution of other characteristics as the rest of the population as a whole. This is saving in terms of the amount of data that we need as we don't need specific data in each subpopulation. The, the features and variables and assumptions from the previous parts also apply as we combine those models to achieve this one. To derive the model, let's consider what we have already worked out. In part one, on the level of cities and their industries, we identify the percentage of jobs being remote ready. In part two, for individuals, we identified the chance of someone working from home given that their job is remote ready. For this sub-question, we need to go back to the city level for the proportion of people who will actually work from home. This leads us to a population simulation method in which we will take our industry projections from part one and demographic data to generate a representative population for each city in 2024 and 2027. For each member of the population, we use model two to find out their chance of working from home, and then we aggregate over all of the members of the population by summing. To generate the populations, we use technical computing via a custom recursive procedure, recursive gen, which starts with the total projected active population of a given city in a given year, and recursively subdivides it into representative chunks, one characteristic at a time. It splits the population in half for each sex, and then into groups for each industry based on the relevant city's industry percentages at that time, and repeats this for all of the other factors. At the base case, it has generated all of the attributes of the person class, and it instantiates a number of person objects equal to the remaining population. It calls model two on each of those characteristics, and we sum over people in order to, in that city, in order to achieve a percentage, um, which we can then use as the answer to the model. We repeat this method for all five cities in 2024 and 2027 to get the results that we need. So what results does that give us? So as you can see, Seattle's topping the charts with Omaha and Liverpool behind. Barry and Scranton are less affected and swap between 2024 and 2027. To evaluate, our results are again consistent with existing projections. The model can be generalized to work with other cities and considers a large range of factors which might make it more reliable. However, extending the model is slow as it is data hungry. Also, the pandemic correction constant and our assumption about representative subpopulations potentially have a significant impact on the results. As a result of our work, the problem asks us to make some conclusions to present to the Prime Minister. 
From our results, remote work remains strong post-pandemic and can only continue to grow. There is a significant variability between cities, so greater investment in towns like Barrie could reduce remote work inequality. To better understand homework trends, we could better analyze how sensitive our models to our, are to our assumptions, replace the pandemic correction constant with a variable guided by a submodel, and explore why our models show differences between US and UK trends. Thank you for listening. We'll now gladly answer any questions you might have. Question. So you, you di differentiated the, the uh, likelihood that someone would work from home pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. And then as I understood it, the difference between those two probabilities was encapsulated by this constant 1.4. Um, can you comment on where that came from? I, I know you referenced the paper, but in that, in that um, paper, where does that constant come from and how is it justified? Um, okay, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I would say that 